Welcome to the second video on graphing within charts and data. Now in this video, we're going to look at the same graphs, but see how we use these graphs to explain more in-depth problems. So just a quick recap on the graphs we looked at. The first graph we looked at was a bar graph, and remember, you just have to read values off this graph. The second graph was a scatter graph. A scatter graph was just a whole lot of points, and you needed to look for trend lines and outliers and groups within that. The third graph was a time series graph. You were looking for trends over time. That means fluctuations and changes over time. The fourth graph was a dot plot. And in a dot plot, you needed to look for the median, the middle, the spread, how spread out your data was, and you could immediately see whether there were any outliers. And remember, the median was the best measure of average. The final graph we looked at was box and whisker plots. In a box and whisker graph, we looked to compare the medians, the middle line of each of these graphs, so we could compare the side-by-side -side graphs. We also learned about the interquartile range, which is the spread of the graph. How variable is the data? This is from the bottom of the box, the lower quartile, to the top of the box, the upper quartile. So let's look at a question now. In a question, when you're going to explain these in written format, you're going to use the structure, identify the problem in the question, explain why there's a problem, and finally you're going to discuss if there's any improvements you could offer. In this question, it talks about Sally, who worked in a carrot pack house as an after-school job. Now, Sally wanted to know if there was a correlation between the length of the carrot and its weight. She measured and weighed 30 carrots and plotted the results, and here they are on the graph. She concluded there's no real difference between the length and the weight, as the overall minimum and maximum values haven't really changed. Is Sally correct? Well, first of all, it's likely we're going to have to identify a problem. When you read this data in a question, know that there's often going to be mistakes, and they've given you these mistakes on purpose. In this case, we can see that there is a general trend. It's not really correct for Sally to conclude that there's no correlation between length and weight, because it does look, as the length increases, it seems like the trend goes upwards. It seems like we increase the weight as well. And make sure you write down that extra detail. So looking at the graph, there is a trend that can be seen. It starts at the lower lengths and weight, lengths around 100 and weight around 50 or 60, and moves up into the higher lengths and weight of around 220 millimeters and around 140 grams. This shows that there is a general upwards trend. And finally, we need to discuss ways that we can make her suggestions better. Sally has not taken into account these two outliers. These two outliers are affecting her judgment. But she needs to know that they are just that. They are outliers and they don't fit with the trend of the graph. So you need to explain that there is an outlier at 119 millimeters and another outlier at about 199 millimeters. If you took these two out, it would be easier for Sally to see the trend line. So here's what you need to know. It is very likely there will be some kind of problem in the question that you're given. You need to define what that problem is. Secondly, once you've identified that there is a problem and just said in one sentence what the general answer is, you need to explain with statistics, with your charts and data and the knowledge you have from your graphs, why there's a problem and what you're going to do about that problem. The third thing you need to do is discuss. You need to say, well, she's assumed this or they've assumed that and list any improvements that you could make. How would you do it better? If you cover all three of these bases, you've given an excellence level answer. Just listing what the problem is and saying, oh, I don't think that mode is the best measure of average, or, or saying that in fact there is a trend in the graph, will get you an achieved mark. If you use statistics to explain what you've actually done or go into slightly more depth, that's going to give you a merit. And finally, if you discuss the improvements you could make to their conclusions and any assumptions they might have made, that gets you up to excellence. Let's look at an old NCEA question now. Richard wants to move overseas to a warmer city, and he wants to move to either Rome or Nairobi. Now here are two graphs which show the monthly average, the minimum, and the maximum temperatures in both of these cities between 2007 and 2009. Richard decides that he wants to move to Rome, this is the graph down the bottom, because he thinks the temperature in Rome is higher than in Nairobi, so therefore Rome must be warmer. Is Richard actually correct to believe that the temperature in Rome is higher than the temperature in Nairobi? And therefore, is Rome actually warmer? We need to justify our answer and we need to use these graphs. So remember our structure. The first thing we're going to do is list our problem. Our problem is that it's not actually correct for Richard to believe that the temperature in Rome is higher. And if you look at these graphs carefully, 
you can see that Nairobi's average maximum temperature is below 25 degrees. And if we explain this in a little more detail, you'll see that Nairobi's minimum maximum temperature, the bottom maximum temperature, never actually goes below 20 degrees. Whereas Rome's maximum temperature consistently falls below this 20 degrees. Approximately half the year it's below this value. And in the same way, Nairobi's average minimum temperature, this is this bottom line, it never goes below 10 degrees. So it's a lot more consistent in Rome because Rome consistently goes below 10 degrees. About half the year this temperature is below 10. So we've used actual statistics and facts to list why he might be wrong. Although Rome looks like it has slightly higher maximum temperatures, on the whole it does seem to be colder. And you can discuss how he should make a conclusion based on more average temperatures, not just on the very maximum temperature in each year, because that's going to give him a more consistent answer for the general temperature in that city. That's how he could improve this graph.